Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this Flames of War Plastic Tiger 1E platoon. The sticker on this box says that it's the Tiger's March edition, which was I believe a limited edition, so I don't know if it's still available, but the important stuff is exactly the same as the regular edition anyway. This kit builds 5 Tigers suitable for late war. There's a different box for mid-war Tigers which is cheaper as it contains only 2 tanks, so if you don't need 5 Tigers or maybe you don't want Zimmerit, that's the box for you. On the back of the box there's a brief paragraph about Tigers, a side-on image of the completed and painted model, and an exploded diagram. You could actually use this to build the kit with no further assistance. As usual for Flames of War kits there are no instructions included inside the box, but the Flames of War website does have a good page of instructions, pictures and information including the Tiger's stats in Flames of War. Inside the box we find 10 sprues of Tiger parts, 2 sprues per tank. One of these is marked common and includes, I assume, all of the common Tiger components like most of the hull, hatches, spare track links and gun. The sprues are moulded in a yellow colour. I'm not sure if this is intended to make the tank look more presentable on the tabletop without painting, or to help with painting somehow, or if it's just the cheapest colour of plastic Battlefront could get. It is striking, but I don't have a problem with it at all. It'll get painted over anyway. Maybe it has something to do with the game tanks. Something I rather like is that you get the option of pre-damaged skirting for this tank. I think this is some nice, thoughtful design. The late sprue contains all of the parts that are supposed to give this tank away as a late war tiger. I believe that's mostly things being covered in Zimmerit, the style of road wheels and the absence of the outer set of wheels. All of these parts are quite sharp and nicely detailed. The mould lines are very very minor and almost non-existent, and I couldn't see any damaged or mismoulded parts. Good quality sprues as I expect from Battlefront. Also included is one grey sprue of tank commanders, with one commander for each tank. These look perfectly reasonable to me and shouldn't require too much cleanup for those wanting to use them. There's also this sheet of decals for the 101st Heavy Panzer Battalion. These look pretty good, and they're labelled such that you can correctly number each tank for specific commanders, like Wittmann and Wessel. Heh, <laughs> nuclear Wessel. Say Wessel again. No. The Tiger's Marsh bonus content consists of these two acrylic objective markers featuring some Tiger artwork. I think these are really cool and I will probably use them. There's also three Tiger 1 cards for Gale Force 9's game Tanks. I've never played it but I'm pretty tempted to get into it, especially considering I could probably play it without actually buying any more models. Also for Tanks there are four crew cards, three commanders and a driver who is determined and two upgrade cards, Schurzen and Clever Hans. And finally, unrelating to the game tanks, you get this sheet of decals. These are insignia for other heavy panzer battalions. No magnets are included in this kit, but if you want to magnetise this tank, don't go rushing too far ahead. If you're using Battlefront's own magnets, you probably won't have any issues, but if like me, you're using 2mm thick magnets, then to avoid a big gap between the hull and turret, you will have to glue one of the magnets inside either the hull or turret, rather than on the external recesses the magnets are intended to go into. For more information on how I use my magnet stick for correct magnet polarity, check the quick tips video I uploaded the other day, link in the description and in the card on screen now. Ok, let's build this thing. I start by gluing the tracks to the lower hull. This is made easy by the keying that ensures you are gluing the tracks to the correct side of the hull. You can put the right track backwards on the left side of the hull, but don't. The tracks look pretty good and the treads have some detail which is pretty nice. It doesn't extend all the way along the bottom, which I guess is fine. I suspect this is done to make moulding easier. Then comes the hull rear, because I'm a numpty I didn't film myself gluing this on. It's quite easy though it was a bit of a tight fit to get it between the tracks. There is keying to guide this, because of the angle in the guide parts it's easiest to slot this downwards onto the hull. Speaking of tight fits, the lower front hull is a very tight fit. Make sure your tracks are glued on solidly before trying to fit this, or it will push them out of place. I had to apply quite a bit of pressure to get this in place while I was test fitting it, always test fit. To avoid making a mess with the glue, I move the part slightly out of place and then add the glue behind the part. I slot it back into the correct position and it stays there nicely. Doesn't look too bad to me. Then comes this upper part. 
It has tabs to help guide it into place. There is a small gap at the front which I'm not a fan of, but it doesn't look too horrendous. Maybe it can be passed off as being caused by the Zimmerit, or filled with putty later. I then glue the front plate to the whole top. The keying here will help you get the part centred properly. The front part should be at a slight angle to the whole top. To ensure I have this angle correct, I quickly use the whole side to check, and then I glue it into place. Both of these go on quite easily. Then the hull top assembly can be glued onto the lower portion of the hull. There's nothing especially tricky about this. It more or less just drops into place. I apply pressure to try and ensure a good bond and minimal gaps. Unfortunately there are still a few gaps around the hull, the most prominent being on the left rear. This wouldn't be an issue if the hull was one piece. I guess having multiple parts makes the Zimmerit easier to mould though. Certainly not the worst gaps in the world I suppose, and they can be fixed. With the hull together I then add the side skirts. For this hull and probably the rest of them too, I've chosen to use the damaged skirts. These have some king, though it doesn't lock into place very easily owing to how flat the raised posts are, but it's not too hard to position these correctly. I use my knife to gently nudge them into place. I really like that there's a choice here. I think it would have been rare to see a tiger without damaged skirts unless it was fresh from the factory. Having the part already damaged is nice because it saves having to bend and damage the parts myself and risk breaking them or have them not fit properly. Now for some detailing. First I glue the spare track links onto the lower hull front. These should go up this way like so. There's no guide here so I try to put them on as neat as I can. I'm also trying to use this to hide the gap in the front of the hull. The only complaint I have about this is the bar holding the track should be longer. It should be as wide as the entire lower front hull. Next I glue on the hull machine gun. This part is kind of fiddly to install. Use tweezers for victory. It is keyed so it's hard to get it on all lopsided. Looks alright to me. Bonus points to Battlefront for including two of the hull MGs on the sprue. I can imagine this part being broken or lost very easily. To finish the hull I glue on the bucket. I really like that they included this detail. I've seen some pictures of tigers with the bucket hung here on the jack, so that's where I put mine. I suppose the crew would just put it wherever they found convenient though, so you could put it anywhere you want really. Maybe up on the turret by the commander's hatch, you know just in case he needs a vomit bucket or something. I think they use these buckets for pooping, so I suppose it makes sense that they would keep it at the back of the tank out of the way, as downwind as possible. Enough about the bucket, onto the turret. I start by gluing the bottom into the rest of the turret. This is easy though I was admittedly a little sloppy with the glue around the bottom. It looks fine though. The mantlet can then be glued onto the turret front here. It's got guide parts on the back to get it into place properly. Keep in mind it should go up this way with the flat part of the gun mounting hole towards the bottom. After that I glue the stowage box on the turret rear. There's keying here and putting it on is just as easy as it looks. I then turned my attention towards the gun. This is a nice enough part though the end of the barrel is flat, so I drilled that out carefully until I was satisfied with the opening. You might also notice that one side of the muzzle brake is a little bit flat, though I don't think it's a huge issue. You probably wouldn't notice unless you were looking really closely anyway. After cleaning the sprue burrs and mould lines off, obviously, I glue the gun into place. It's clearly keyed and fits very well, though do still check to make sure you've got it aligned nice and straight. I don't think anybody wants even a slightly misaligned gun. Bad for accuracy. Then I must choose a commander's cupola. There are two kinds in this kit, and then I decide if I want it open or buttoned down. These are different parts too. Unsurprisingly I chose button down. It's good to have options though. To finish the model I add some spare track links to the turret sides. These have little protrusions along the top to help them cling to the side of the turret and they fit very well indeed. And that's the turret and indeed the entire tank completed. I have two other tigers in this scale to compare this model with. Battlefront's older resin and metal offering on the right and Plastic Soldier Company's obviously plastic tiger on the left. Painted versus unpainted models aside, you can see all three are fairly different. And not just in that the new kit has Zimmerit and the rest don't. Size wise the two Battlefront models are very close to each other, which isn't really surprising. The Plastic Soldier Company Tiger is slightly smaller. 
which is closer to reality, I'm not sure. I don't think it's really significant enough to worry about for gaming purposes. The plastic models both have sharper and, in my opinion, nicer detail than the resonant metal version. The Battlefront plastic is a bit more chunky and rugged looking than the Plastic Soldier Company model, and its track detail is much, much better. You can see the gaps at the ends of those annoying multi-part track sets on the PSC tank. Personally, I'm not such a big fan of tanks with Zimmerit, but it does look reasonable to me and it is nice to have some Tigers that look a little bit different. All three of these tanks are pretty nice. If you demanded that I pick a favourite, I would find it very hard. It would be one of the plastic models though. Good thing I don't have to choose and can have all three. In my opinion, they would all be fine alongside each other on the gaming table, though I can see how some might prefer to keep them at least in separate platoons on the table. I really like this kit. It was quick to build, which is almost a bad thing because it was really a pleasure to build. The result is, in my opinion, a very nice representation of a late war tiger. That said, the model isn't perfect. My main issues are with the gaps at the back of the hull. It might just be errors in construction by myself, in fact it probably is, but it still bugs me and I think it's the weakest part of the tank. On the other hand, the details are really neat and crisp and I think they will take paint very well. I really like that there are extra detail parts like the bucket and a jerry can, though I do always want more stowage and little detail parts like that. I also like that there are multiple part choices for the hatches and especially the damaged or pristine side skirts. That's a nice touch that I wasn't expecting. The instructions on the Flames of War site were very clear and very easy to follow as they usually are. I will of course include a link to those in the description if anyone needs it. I rather like the limited edition extras that came with this particular kit, but it would still be a good model without those. I think when it comes time to paint these I will do them differently to the Tigers I already have, so any suggestions for a camo scheme would be appreciated. So what do you think about this plastic Tiger kit from Battlefront? Let me know in the comments section below. And of course don't forget to do things like subscribing here on YouTube and following me on social media. Check the links in the description to find me. If you really like the things I do, please consider helping to support the channel over at Patreon. Patrons get to see my videos a bit early along with some patron only bonus content and of course access to the patron only discord channel. I shall return soon, so until then, happy modelling and thanks for watching. Farewell.